Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I thought I would talk a little bit today about the software development career path. A lot of developers have been asking about what is the career path for a software developer. And I'll get into some specifics in some later videos. I don't think I've really talked too much about it. I know that I'm going to be doing a video coming up talking about going down the management track and, and if that's right for you and how to get out of it if you're down that track and uh, you know all that kind of problems that can come with it or you know, making that choice. But right now I just want to talk about the kind of where a software developer goes, like what a career looks like for most software developers and what it can be. So there's a lot of different options and career paths in software development. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do, right? It starts out typically with what technology that you choose and then really, uh, you know, there, there's a couple of decisions uh, and uh, I'll give you, there's some more in-depth information in my book, Soft Skills of Software Developers Life Manual. If you haven't gotten to get it, uh, I've got some chapters in there about company sizes and job choices and career choices, but I'm going to give you kind of an overview of some of the options here first. So. One of the first ones is that there's basically three types of developers, that at least how I classify it. One is that you are what I call a career developer. That means that you are going to work a nine to five job, work for someone else, and you want to climb up the ranks. Now, there's paths. <laughs> it's, it's, I should draw like a level, like, you know, character advancement, like an RPG uh, tree, skill tree path. Maybe I'll do that actually. But, uh, but there's paths down there. So, but before we get into that, let's talk about the other one. So career developer, you got freelancer or contractor, consultant. This is someone who doesn't work for one particular company, but they freelance their services out. They bill hourly and they work for multiple customers. It's different than just being a contractor who works for a single company as like a 1099 or just being paid hourly. This is you have multiple customers you're working for. So that's a freelancing route. And then there's the entrepreneur. That would be what, what I'm doing now, except I'm not actually writing much code these days. But this would be someone who's creating an app, who's writing code to build a, a software as a service app or something like that, or building some software that they're selling. They're using their software development skills as an entrepreneur and, uh, and to build their own business. Uh, so uh, now most people are going to choose the, 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 the career developer path. So I'm going to talk more about that. And if you're interested about the freelancing or the entrepreneur, uh, I've got two options for you. And then this also applies for career developer. It, any three, any of these three paths would uh, you might benefit from my how to market yourself a software developer course. Uh, I've got video interviews from different career paths. I tell you how to market yourself and brand yourself and and build a business. Uh, whether you want to be a freelancer, adventure career as a career developer, or if you want to be an entrepreneur. And then the second option that I have which I should have soon, it's not available yet, but maybe we'll update this video when it is, is I'm putting together a special entrepreneur type of course. This is gonna be an advanced training course. It's gonna show you how to build an online business. I don't have it yet, at least at the time of recording this, but it's been requested so much that this is definitely one of the big projects I'll be working on this year. Um, so now let's get into a career developer. What what does your path look like? So. I would recommend that most of you skip the whole junior developer thing. You can find jobs that say junior developer, but you don't ever have to be a junior developer. In fact, I, I sort of came in, like my first real development job was like senior developer. And that's where I would recommend that you just come in as developer, senior developer. Junior developer is typically a job that the company doesn't want to pay as much money. <laughs> so that's what it typically means. But you're going to be working just as hard, doing just as much work, doing the same things as a senior developer does, except they're going to get paid a lot more. So that typically sucks. And maybe like in the first six months, you're, you think it's okay because you don't know as much as them. But if you're a hard worker and you, you catch up, pretty soon you'll realize you're doing the same amount of work like a year or two down the road. And, and you're getting paid a lot less and it's gonna be hard to work your way out of that position because once you're viewed as that junior developer, you're kind of stuck there. So I would skip that. You can come in there if you, if you want to, especially if you're coming in through an internship and you, do, you maybe you don't have the confidence or the experience and, the, and that could be a path. But I would recommend instead learning as much on your own, building some apps on your own and, and sort of building your own kind of business, maybe doing a little bit of consulting so that you have a portfolio so that you can come in as a regular developer. Now, if you're coming out of college, you might already have some projects or some experience, or if you're coming out of a developer bootcamp, you might be able to come right into a mid-level developer position, which is great. 
so so that that those opportunities do exist but now from there where do you go well if you want to make the most money you should probably specialize right you could probably be a generalist and come in as a junior or kind of mid-level coming in but really where the money is at in software development is specialization again my how to market yourself as a software developer course i teach you exactly how to do this uh, i also have videos on specialization here on this channel that you should check out if you are interested but this is important because specialists get paid a lot more money uh, again, check out those videos or check out the course. I'm not going to go into the details here, but that's typically where you want to go. Now, you have choices that are sort of higher than that, which is you have some choices around what type of work you want to do, first of all. So there is front end work, which might involve some design elements as well, right? People that are developers can be good at creating websites and creating the user interface for the website and doing some design work or just working in the front end, implementing the design in the front end. It could be either one of those kind of UX type of person. It's someone who can do design if you're if you're up for it, I'm, I'm not the best at design, but if you can be good at design and you can write the front end code, you're gonna be extremely valuable because there's very few of those. There's designers and there's developers, but if you're sort of that unicorn hybrid, that's a good choice. So that's, that's one option. Uh, the, the other option would be kind of middleware, which there's less of this now because most of the middle tier is, is sort of integrated in with the front end but you can be a middle tier, especially on a really big application. And then there's the back end. Again, there's less of this as well because a lot of developers now are expected to be full stack developers, which I'll get to in a second. But the back end would be like working with the database, working with uh, you know different pieces of data and, uh, and some some integration with the middleware where you're you're working on the logic, really the system. There are different ways that people slice this up, but essentially those are you know front end or back end is, is is what you could really really call it. Front end works with the UI, back end works with with everything else that that doesn't have a UI element. Uh, it can be fun to do back end stuff. I've done a lot. I've done both, right? And I enjoyed working on printers, working on the back end, you know, the logic of printers and stuff. And that was my specialization at one point. So that's kind of a choice. You can choose your career path there. There's also variations of it where, I mean, you can work on web, right? You can work on uh, uh, embedded systems, which is like I did with printers or there's all the Raspberry Pis and all computer firmware toasters. <laughs> you could write the firmware for toasters. There's, there's a lot of options there. And then there's, you know, like applications, desktop applications, mobile applications. There's a lot of different places. You can be a cloud developer today working in the cloud, uh, working on applications that are in the cloud, software as a service, you know, uh, services, backend services and APIs. There's a lot of, a lot of different options. I'm, pr I'm probably even leaving some out, but those are the general major categories. So then also with your career, you can choose to work for small companies, medium sized companies or large companies, and they're gonna have very different aspects, right? If you're working for a large company, you're not gonna be able to contribute as much to the bottom line. You can sort of get lost. You can sort of sit at your desk and do nothing, maybe working for a really big company and someone might not even notice, right? Uh, but you're gonna get to work on some really cool stuff. You're probably gonna have big budgets and you're probably gonna have lots of education and opportunities available to you. Uh, and you can work on stuff that you can work on anywhere else. For example, when I worked at HP, I worked on this huge multifunction printer, which was just like this huge, huge project. I would never work on that except for working at a big company. I got to see some really cool technologies and stuff like that. But also, typically they're slower moving. It can be really frustrating. Uh, if you're at a middle company, you've got a different set of trade-offs. Most companies are middle, what I call middle, and, and their personalities are very different depending on the company. Uh, there's You can't hide as much in there. You might contribute more to the bottom line. They're going to be very risk adverse because they can't afford to work on cutting edge te technology and, and they, can't, they can't afford to, you know, they've been around for maybe five or ten years. They can afford to risk everything and uh, you know they sometimes that can be a frustrating place to be a small company like a startup you might be working on cutting edge technology you, everything may you may be wearing multiple hats it may be exciting but you may be working like 80 hour weeks it might be crazy right and you you may be having some some chance at a big jackpot if the company does really well 
uh, and uh, you know, but things could crumble real quick. You could be looking for another job. I've worked for some startups and they went under and that's it. Now you're looking for another job and well, like one week later, you don't have much warning. You don't have a severance package. So those, those are some, some choices there. And, and you can progress in your career uh, in multiple ways. You can go from, you know, I, if you're just starting out, I recommend starting for some startups, taking some risks, uh, learning how to move at a fast pace and wear multiple hats. And then if you want to, you know, go into uh, more into the bigger corporations or something like that, you could do that. Some people say, hey, I just want to work for Microsoft or Google. So they uh, brush up their skills and they get good enough to get in to there and maybe they start with an internship and they want to just work their whole career at Microsoft or Google or HP or one of these big companies. There's less of that now, but it is certainly an option and there's some benefits to doing that because you get that seniority, you get to be kind of cool and respected and you can really go down a very deep technical path there. Uh, before we get into that, if you are interested in, in that, uh, definitely check out my Pluralsight course on job interviews. Uh, I talk about the sort of algorithm problems that you need to be able to solve in order to do that and, and a few other things that's going to help you in that case. Uh, but uh, let, let's, let's talk about some of the, the career paths again. So if you just want to stay a programmer, a software developer, uh, you know, you can, you can continue on, on just a regular path and work at small and medium sized companies, but you're going to hit this this glass ceiling pretty quickly. We're not going to be able to advance anymore. You're a senior developer. You, you have five or ten years experience. It, it usually hits around that point, and you're not going to really be able to grow or advance much more. You're just going to your your salary is sort of going to cap out at that point. You know your advancement can go as starting your own business, becoming a freelancer, billing hourly. You know high hourly rate. Uh, I used to bill three hundred bucks an hour, and now I bill five hundred dollars an hour. Uh, you know, if if you if you want my time, if you want me to work hourly for you, that's you know that's it took time to build up to there, but that was way more than I'd ever make as a salaried employee. Now, uh, the other option from there, if you want to continue to to grow past that, uh, again you have the entrepreneurial option, but the other major option is to work for a big company like a Microsoft or an Apple or a Google or something like that, where they have very high technical you know architect level positions where you can make you know uh, 200 300 thousand dollars a year as a very senior level developer that's like a they, they usually call them fellows or technological fellows where you, you are like a very high level architect so you can go down that path and typically only big corporations are going to have those uh, those options uh, smaller companies might have CTO or they might have a director of technology or director of development, depending on you know medium-sized companies might have those, and you can go in that role. But it's not going to be as much technical. If you want to be pure technical, writing code, being an architect, you might have to go down that road at a big company, a corporation like that. I'm giving you a lot of information here, so uh, you know if you have some questions, you can you can email me. But uh, but but also check out my 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 other videos and, and courses and stuff. So anyway, uh, let's see where were we at? So we talked about. Uh, that 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 career path. The other path is to is to is to not go down uh, the the programming or the technology career path, but to go into the management path. Again, this kind of crosses over into that CTO, maybe uh, director of uh, development, or maybe just development manager path. You can go down that path, and and you can go up a little bit higher there, and you can even go to the executive level there with with bigger companies. That's an option, but just going to get away from the technology. So you can you can choose those paths. Uh, another another approach for a career for a developer, which is opening up now, which I'm encouraging a lot of developers to do, is if you learn a little bit of QA and testing, you can become an automation engineer, which is very valuable. There's a lot of uh, I've got a a video here on on creating an automation framework in Selenium, one of my most popular videos because this is a popular topic. This is and you can get paid really well doing this. Uh, because it, it's really important. There's very few people that can do this right now, and uh, having that skill is valuable. Being able to use Selenium, being able to build an automation framework, and understand how to do automated testing is, is valuable. So that's that's pretty much it, right? I mean, there's there's some other options, of course, uh, but but the key is that you you know you, you specialize at the beginning. You kind of choose, and you got to make those choices. What kind of company do you want to work for? What kind of technology do you want to use? And do you want to be front end, back end developer? You can switch this over over time, but you should always have kind of one specialty at any given point that you're going to be more successful that way. And, but the big question you really have to ask yourself is: Do you want to go down the purely technical route? If you want to go into management, 
you're going to be doing something different than if you if you want to go into the purely technical route and you want to work for someone else you're probably eventually going to have to end up at a microsoft or a google or an apple in order to be able to do that because th those opportunities are just not going to be available at, at smaller and, and medium-sized companies. So you might want to think about that. If you want to go down management route, you got a little bit more options. And again, you can always go on your own if you, and that's what I encourage most people to do is eventually, I think you should eventually become an entrepreneur. Eventually you should you know, consider working for someone else as a training so you can learn how to go out on your own. That's not for everyone, but you know, that, that's, that's another option. And the sky's the limit there, right? As an entrepreneur, I, I make a lot more money than I could ever make in a salaried uh, job. And that's because the sky's the limit. It's, it's up to me. I can make videos and, <laughs> and make money for a living. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's a lot more options. You can use your skills in, in different ways. Uh, so yeah, so, you know, and there's probably a lot of things I didn't cover. I mean, one thing just thinking off the top of my head here is, is you could, you could become a trainer, right? I sort of went down the teaching route and that's once you have development skills, you can go and teach other people. So anyway, I hope that helps you. Obviously there's a ton to cover here. I could talk about this topic for hours, literally, but again, I want to remind you if you haven't checked out my, uh, first of all, my book on soft skills, software developers, life manual. I talk about the company sizes and the different job positions and all that in, in the career section, the first like 15 chapters or so of the book that you'll find pretty valuable. And then if you are interested in, like if you've hit that glass ceiling, especially, right? This is for you that you, you're kind of, you, you, or you don't want to hit it. You want to be able to go beyond it. It's going to require building a reputation and building an audience, building a personal brand. And that, that I cover in my, how to market yourself as a software developer course. You can find this here. Uh, I think you know thousands of developers have already downloaded it and bought the course and have started implementing these things. But that's going to help you to get past that glass ceiling. That's how that's how I got past it in my career and had all these opportunities open up. Is I basically learned how to build a brand and market. I mean, this is why you're watching these videos right now, right? This is a business that I was able to build out of that, but I had to build a brand. I had to market myself. I had to build credibility. I show you how to do those things in, in that course. Anyway, long video, but like I said, there's tons of stuff to, co to cover on this. If you have specific questions about career development that I haven't covered here, that I've sort of opened up and, and it's not in my other material, definitely send me an email at john at simpleprogrammer.com. I'll try to answer those questions, especially if you have very specific questions that will help uh, because I can very specifically answer them and not have to talk for like 17 minutes. <laughs> anyway, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you feel like this would benefit someone, uh, share it to them. All right. Take care. Talk to you next time.